Welcome to another fine production of D-Lab's Basic Training with front of the box and think on top of it. What do we got going on today? Well, we going to have to go through some paperwork first. So I received this little amp in the mail the other day from a guy named Omar in New Jersey. He sent me this note, which I will review. He says, Terry, hope all is well. Of course it is. So we talked about this amp a few weeks ago. It's a little 5F1 clone that he built into this Dan Electro chassis. And I just can't seem to figure it out. As you can see, I built it out of spare parts. Most of the parts are new or gently used. I've checked and triple checked all my connections and I just can't seem to get any output. There's obviously something wrong that he's not catching. So, now, we'll look at the today list from Fink. So today, we have a 5F1 Dan Electro conversion amplifier, okay? The fault, there's no output, but there's no smoke, so that's a good thing. So here are the three things that I want you guys to consider while we're going over this amp. Maybe you can figure it out before I do. Is it a power supply issue? Is it a bad ground? Is it a defective tube? Or could it possibly be that the Dan Electro donor chassis is rejecting the transplant. It doesn't want to be tube type. We're going to find out in this episode of Basic Training. All right, so D-Lab is going to perform my typical three things. First, we're going to perform a visual inspection. Then we'll power the unit and check voltages. And the third, we'll actually ohm out components and see if possibly even though things measure correctly, there's something else wrong. Perhaps a bad ground. We'll see. All right, here we go. First step. Visual inspection with a little bit of brain juice. So this is a 5F1 design. It's my power transformer, 5Y3 rectifier, Hammond output transformer, 6V6, 12AX7, and of course, the tooth sticking out of the chassis. So Omar utilized a standard 5F1 eyelet board. So this design should be per the print that you can find online for free. So we've got a power switch, fuse holder, idiot light, and a volume control. And then we have two input controls. Around the side here, you can see the speaker jack, okay? There he is right there. The issue that I see with this is the input jack and the speaker jack are way too close. So once this amp starts operating, more than likely it's gonna have some feedback problems. Now we'll swing over here to the power supply section. I noticed that the center tap of the filament line has been capped off. It should be down here with the other center tap for the high voltage. If you don't use that center tap, you should be using the 200 ohm resistor artificial ground system. Otherwise, you'll get all kinds of buzz in your amp. Those resistors aren't there, so this center tap needs to be hooked up, but we'll take care of that later. So tucked under there is the 5Y3 tube socket. 6V6 and 12AX7 are here. And we got quite a few antennas flying off of those, so more than likely we'll be fighting noise but I'm not too concerned about all that right now because the amp has no output. We need to figure out why that is. So here's your power supply caps. You got a 10K resistor here that feeds screens. And then this is a 22K, which goes to the preamp section. Here is my cathode resistor with his little cap. And these little guys, these are 68K resistors that go to the input jacks. So from what I'm seeing here, there's no reason that we can't go ahead and power up the amp. Everything appears to be constructed correctly. So let's fire it up and see what the voltages look like. Well, here's the main symptom of the amp. I've got it powered up, looper on the input, little test speaker there hooked up, volume all the way up. I can hear just a wisp of audio coming out of that speaker. So let's get a meter hooked up, take a look at the voltages on the tubes. All right, now I'm gonna check the voltages 
on the amp, it's powered up, filaments are on, so I don't need to check the 6 volt supply. We're just going to look at the DC supplies, and I'm only going to look direct on the two bases, because that will verify the power supply is working. So here is our 6P6. I'm using my little clippity doodah lead, so that I don't short anything out. That was interesting. There we go. A little over 400 volts on pin 3. And then our screen is here. 366. This is my cathode. There he is. 20 volts. So seeing that cathode voltage and seeing that we have plate and screen tells me that the 6V6 is up and running. It has all the voltages that it needs to work. Now let's check out the 12AX7. Alright, so pin 1 is over here. That's plate voltage. That's good. 2 signal. 3 is the first cathode. 2.3 volts. Seems a little high. Then we go on this side. And we have pin 6. Plate. Signal. And there's cathode. Also a bit high. But the 12AX7 is also showing that it has all the proper voltages to operate. So that brings up the question, guys. We have all the right voltages. Power supply is obviously good. The output transformer should be good on the primary side because we see the high voltage going to the 6V6. So why isn't this amplifier running? So as a famous captain would say, this is damn peculiar, okay? We have ruled out the power supply. We've ruled out a ground issue, and we know it can't be defective tubes because they are showing the correct voltages for operation. The signal could be the issue, but I think it's even more basic than that. So now we're gonna go to step zero which is check resistances of the components. All right, here we go, ground zero. We're gonna verify the resistances of all these corn components in the 5F1. I'll start with the cathode resistor that is going to the 6V6. So we're looking for 470 ohms to ground. We got it. Then we have the two cathode resistors going to the 12AX7. They're 1.5K, and there's one of them. And there's the other. So it appears as though those are fine. Now we're going to check the plate resistors to the 12AX7. All right, these guys are tucked up here. They tie together going to the preamp power supply. So here's one of them. And here's the other. It appears as though we have 100 on both of those. But do we? What are we looking for here, guys? We're looking for 100K. Take a close look at my meter. That is 100 ohms, not K ohms. So, unfortunately, it appears as though the incorrect plate resistors are put in. They're 100 ohm, and that's why there's no gain on the 12AX7. Even though you have the plate voltage, you have no gain. There's nothing to make that voltage swing when the signal comes in. There's the issue. So why does this happen? Well, I'm surprised I don't see it more often. These crummy blue overseas resistors have color codes that make no sense. This resistor right here is supposed to be a 220K, which it measures that, but you look at that color code, red, red, black, orange, brown. What the heck is that? A real resistor would be red, red, yellow. This one right here, is supposed to be a 1.5K, okay? And it is, but look at the color code. Brown, green, black, it looks like gold, brown. What the heck's going on? So the only way that you could avoid this problem is to physically check every one of these resistors before you put it into your amp, or how about buy resistors that have the right color codes? Okay, I'm gonna change out those plate resistors. I've got 200K resistors, look! 
It's brown, black, yellow. Pretty amazing, huh? We're going to change those out and see if the amp works. Well, here's one of the pulled resistors, 100 ohm. And now we got 100 Ks installed. We are ready to test. Okay, you guys ready? Is it going to fix it? Got my luber hooked up. Climbs all the way down. Look at there. It's working! So another valuable lesson learned here at Basic Training. Always look for the obvious.